How do I tension chain? In competition robotics, chain is often used as a power transmission method. For it to function properly, it needs to be tensioned properly, not too tight and not too loose. A chain may be perfectly tensioned to begin with, but if it's fresh new chain, as soon as it's loaded, you may see a sag or loosening of the chain. If your chain's too tight, it can cause binding and inefficiency in your system, and if it's too loose, it can fall off the sprocket. If you're experiencing either of these failure modes, you likely need to experiment with your chain tension to get the right balance. If your chain is too tight, you need to add another link or another half link to the system. If it's too loose, you'll need to use a variety of different tensioning methods to get it to the correct tension. There are a variety of different methods to tension chain, and we'll go over some of the most popular ones used in competition robotics in this video. The first method is to use a third sprocket to push on the chain. As you can see, this chain is too loose. It's quite floppy and will fall off the sprocket if spun. This third sprocket can act as our tensioner. If we determine where to put it such that it causes the chain to become tight again, we can either fix it in this spot or we can have a mechanism that actively springs it into the chain, keeping it tight even if this chain becomes additionally stretched and slack. This method is generally most appropriate when the chain needs to make multiple revolutions, such as on a continuously spinning mechanism. If you have an easy mounting point for this sprocket, it's one of the easiest chain tensioning methods to implement. Another method of tensioning chain is called a floating sprocket. This one's kind of fun. So you can see that this chain example here is slightly slacked, but there's enough room to fit a larger sprocket in between the two smaller sprockets. This sprocket won't be attached to anything, but if you find the right size larger sprocket, you can properly induce tension in the entire chain run. As this spins, this sprocket will float there with one side going one way and the other side going the other way, just with the chain. This method of chain tensioning is a really good quick fix, but can have some downsides. You need to have the room on either side of the chain to allow it to expand to fit this sprocket in. You also don't want to do this in an application where this chain run could get hit by something as when it flexes, the middle sprocket can pop out, causing your chain to go slack. Another method of tensioning chain is by moving the center distances farther apart. Usually, this is difficult to do as you'll drill a hole, put a bearing in, and that's where your shaft is located. If you use these clamping bearing blocks we sell, you can drill a larger hole close to where you want it to be, and then put one block on either side of your tube, put bolts through, slide it to where you want, and tension the bolts with the lock nut pockets down, and it'll hold that securely in place. If one or both of the sprockets in your chain run are attached using the clamping bearing blocks, you can simply slide the block to tension the chain. These blocks come in a one inch variety or a two inch variety for different sized box tubes. They can be implemented later, assuming you're already mounting to box tube, but it's easier to design them in from the beginning. Another way to tension chain is with an inline chain tensioner. These work similarly to a turnbuckle. When you turn the center portion, it pulls either side towards the center, tensioning the chain. You'll want to install these either with master links or by pressing the links back into the ends. When you install these, you'll want to make sure that the correct amount of chain is in your loop such that there is about 3 eighths to half an inch of thread exposed when it's slack. When you turn the center portion, you'll use up the thread on either side and the chain will pull together. If any remaining thread is shown, once your chain is properly tensioned, you can turn the jam nuts down toward the center to lock it in place. These chain tensioners work great for systems like elevators where the chain doesn't have to complete multiple loops around the sprocket. As you can see, it works fine back and forth. Once the tensioner reaches the sprocket, it locks up. So make sure to design your system such that the tensioner can exist somewhere in the chain run where it won't hit a sprocket on either side. Another way to use the inline tensioner is for elevator carriages and systems where 
the chain is pulling on a fixed item that isn't a sprocket. The chain tensioners have 1032 threads in them, so you can attach one end to your chain and the other end to a 1032 bolt. Keep in mind that there is a left hand thread and a right hand thread in here, so you'll want to take off the end of the tensioner that matches your bolt. As you can see, there are many different ways to tension chain, including some we haven't even talked about in this video. To find the best way to tension the chain in your system, it's helpful to experiment with some of these different ways and find what works best for you. And that's how you tension chain.